Hello everybody, this is Matt with MattsMath.com. Thanks for joining us here today as we talk about linear function patterns. Today we're going to be looking at lines and how do we find a pattern given some data, looking at tables, looking at graphs, and how can we find what that function represents. We're in the Common Core Standard of Functions and we're going to be defining, evaluating, and comparing functions today, especially with linear functions. This lesson has to do with describing patterns. So our guiding question today is going to be how can we describe patterns of linear functions? Now if you remember, just a quick reminder that linear functions are lines. This is an example of a line here and what we're going to be doing today is looking at graphs, looking at tables, and you're going to be able to write an equation from this particular line here. So if you're not familiar with doing that, that's what we're going to do today. We're going to take this line and see if we can find a pattern by writing an equation for it. Alright, so as we've looked at in the past, we're going to be looking at data and tables, and we can write a pattern from the data that we're given. So any pattern that can be written as a line is called a linear function. Basic definition there that you're going to need to get to know, okay? Alright, well here it is, a linear. Basically that means a pattern that can be written as a line. Notice the word line is in there. Well, the word ear is also in there too, but that's not important. The word line is in there. And that is what we're going to be writing today. So we're going to be looking at the lines and we're going to be trying to find a pattern. So here's another example of a line. We look and remember we try to find the y intercept or, or the y intercept, and then we take the slope and write our equation from that. As we looked at in the past, we've talked about nonlinear. Uh, notice that the word non means no and line, so no line, not no ear. <laughs> so no line, it's a pattern that can, can't be written as a line. All right, so something like this, this is a curve, it is continuous, but it is not a line, not in math standards, not in math land, we don't call this a line, we call this a curve. All right, so that's nonlinear, and we're going to be looking at functions today trying to figure out if they're linear, nonlinear, and if we can write a pattern from them. So let's look at and see if we can find patterns with these particular functions that we're going to look at now. All right, here's the first one. Take a look at it. Start at 0, go to 2, 4, 6, 8. Who do we appreciate? Then we go to 150, 125, 100, 75, 50. Is there a pattern here? Well, if you don't ultimately see if it's linear or not, the best way to do this is take it to the graph. We've got points here. We've got 0, 150. That's our first point. Second point is 2, 125, 4, 100, and so forth. So what we're going to do now is we're going to take it to the graph, and we're going to actually graph our dots here. First one is 0, 150. Why don't you follow along? All right, that's going to be right around there. And then second one is 2, 125. It'll be right around there. Next one is 4, and then 100. Next one is 6 and 75. Next one is 8 and 50. Now we take our line, draw all the way through those guys, and what are we noticing here? As long as we've drawn it correctly, looks like this forms a line. What kind of slope does this have? Yeah, if you said negative, you're correct. So this is our slope, this is our line, and we have found now that it looks like it has a pattern, because look here, it goes up to here, then it goes down 25, up to, down 25, up to, down 25, up to, down 25. It forms a pattern. The slope is consistent and constant, and therefore we have a line. This is a linear function. All right, let's do it again. Here's the next one. 415, 620, 825, 1030, 1235. What do you think? You think this is a linear function? All right, well, let's try to graph it again. First one is 4 and 15. That's our first point. So at 4, I'm going to put 15 here. Right around there. And then the next one is 6, 20. Right around there. Next one is 8 and 25. 
Next one is 10 and 30. Next one is 12 and 35. All right, we take our line, put it through those dots. Does it look like a linear function? Yeah, it does. Let's check our pattern here. We're going to go up 2, up 5, up 2, up 5, up 2, up 5, up 2, up 5. Looks like we've got a linear function here because we have a consistent slope. The slope is the same, and it does not change from the pattern. All right, why don't you do this one on your own? We've got a little different one here. We've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 10, and then we're going to go to 2 pi, 4 pi, 6 pi, 8 pi, 10 pi. This is a pattern here. So this is an example of the, if you hadn't seen it already, uh, we've got x is the radius here, all right, and 2 pi. So we're going to graph that and see what we get. Why don't you do that on your own? Why don't you graph it and see what you come up with? Is this linear? All right, let's do the next one. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18. What's the pattern here? Why don't you graph it? We're going to be looking at the perimeter. Is it linear? All right, let's go to our hints here. All right, so notice the first one here. If you wrote the equation here, this was the slope. This was the y-intercept. This was the slope. It's up 5 over 2 plus 5. And then this x was the radius, and y was the area of the particular circle that you had with x as the radius. So uh, if you didn't get the equations, definitely go back to the video, to the previous ones, rewind it, and see if you can figure out writing these equations by figuring out the y-intercept, where you start, and then what's the slope. All right, let's do this one. Got 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5, 28, 40, 52, 64, 76. Well, let's see what we can do. We're going up 1. We're going up, looks like 12. Up 1, up 12, up 1, up 12. So let's do this one here, and uh, let's try it. If every x we go plus 1, and every y we go plus 12. So our rise over run here, our b is 12. For every 1 we go up, or every 1 we go over, we go up 12. What's our m? Hmm. Well, you know what? If we're going 1 this way, we can go 1 back. And then here, we're going up 12. Well, let's go down 12. So down 1, down 1, down 12, down 12. What does that put us at? It would be 28 minus 12, which is 16. So our b is 12, and our slope is 16. So now we can write our equation. y equals, our slope is 16, 16x 16 plus 12. That's our equation. That's how we find the pattern there. Are we looking at and trying to find the b from these guys, and then finding the slope from the change, rise over run. Right. Uh, this is the surface area of a particular shape. If you look back here, how do you find the surface area of this shape? Well, you find the area of the base, find the area of the sides, and the top and the bottom, back and front, you add them together, and you end up with this equation of 12x plus 16, where x is the width and y is the surface area. All right. Here's a picture of my son, and we love going rock climbing. And what we're going to do now is we're going to talk about an equation here, a linear function of rock climbing, and the amount of calories burned. If you spend three hours rock climbing, you burn around 1950 calories. That's a lot. Six hours, 3,900, nine, and so forth. All right? So rock climbing, especially here in Colorado, is amazing. We have a great time doing it as a family, and you burn a lot of calories. It's a great way to stay healthy. Well, let's see if we can write a pattern with this. Let's see if we can find a linear function with this guy. Well, let's graph it. First of all, is the domain discrete or continuous? Looking at it, is it discrete or continuous? Remember what those terms mean? Well, basically the idea is, can you rock climb for half an hour? Yeah, you can. Can you rock climb for a quarter of an hour? Yeah, you can. You can break these x's down. So our domain is going to be continuous. 
Well, let's slide right on over here. And what we're going to do now is we're going to graph this, where we say that the first point is 3, 1950. All right. All right, so our first point here, coming to the graph, it's 3, 1950. Why don't you take a minute, uh, go back here to the chart, write this down, and then why don't you graph this? All right, do you graph it? Let's write our linear function now from it. Remember, try to find b, try to find the slope, and see what you get. Well, with your linear function, if you've got a graph, how many calories would you burn after five and a half hours? By looking at the graph, looking at the function, plug in five and a half for the x and see how many you get. All right, well, b is continuous, as we notice, and notice here it is 650 per every hour. So after five and a half hours, it's 650 times five and a half, and you get 3575. Is that what you got? Definitely go back and double check your answer if you didn't get that. All right, well, that's pretty much it. Can you describe patterns of linear functions now by looking at tables and graphs? Are you able to write the equations? Well, that's what uh, we were doing today. So thanks for joining us. That was pretty much it as we talked about linear function patterns. This is Matt with MathsMath.com. Thanks for joining us. Definitely check us out on Facebook, Solving Maths Problems, or on Twitter at MathsMath. And enjoy math.